Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So like in this situation that we're going through right now, and, and even in this, when I was commenting or responding to comments, there was a guy who said, look, you know, I understand what you're saying about freedom, but right now with everything going on in the world, you know, I'm really worried about this and, you know, maybe the government has to do something. And, and I was like, yeah, but you know, it's funny, like when we fought, when America fought for independence, right? You know, George Washington could have easily become a king. Am I wrong about that? He could have easily become a king, but he, he decided not to, you know, because that w wasn't that the whole reason why we were doing it. So if there's something terrible happening and we have to fight back against it, which we're doing, the whole point of it is not we're not fighting back against it so that we have more government or more people minding us and more rules and restrictions on us. Right. <laughs> If you if, if people look at history honestly and they they ask themselves this question, mm -hmm. when does tyrannical government happen? Does it happen when people are unafraid and happy and prosperous and the economy is exploding and everybody's wealthy or at least getting wealthier? Is that when tyranny happens? Or does tyranny happen when there has to be emergency powers granted to a mm -hmm. small group of people? Mm -hmm. I, I look throughout history. I, I look at the excuses people made in the Roman Republic for Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. And of course it became the Roman empire with Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. You know, Julius Caesar was loyal, you know, to the Roman Republic, right? Mm -hmm. You shall not cross the Rubicon. It's forbidden for legions to cross the Rubicon. Well, it was until it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then he declared himself dictator for life. Mm -hmm. I, I, I look at examples throughout history. I mean, look at what the entire, look at what the entirety of the Middle Ages was. It was crisis after crisis after mm -hmm. crisis after crisis. Oh, we gotta protect ourselves against the Vikings. We gotta protect ourselves against the Muslims. We gotta protect ourselves against other fiefdoms trying to overtake our power. So we're gonna give, 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 give mm -hmm. our property, give our liberty, give up everything. That, that's the entirety of the Middle Ages. It's oh, it's very general and oversimplistic, but that's what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, bring, bring us into, uh, bring us into the, the time of, uh, of divine right. You know, in Europe, when the kings were given the oh, we're put here by God to rule, and so we're going to give up our our freedom to this person who's this all-knowing, inspired by God person. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, all this and that. And, and of course, the Enlightenment. You know, people have to remember about the Enlightenment. They look at it as, as this glowing times when it was wonderful. But but the same excuses were made during the French Revolution when when they gave the, the Directory and Robespierre and, and they gave all these people all these powers, you know, to fix them. And it was an ever-changing situation. Oh, these people are dangerous. No, it's this group that's dangerous. No, it's mm -hmm. this group that's dangerous. And in my lifetime— the 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 uh, narrative has changed. You know, growing up, it was the communists that were dangerous. We gotta we gotta spend a bunch of money to fight the communists, and then of course in 2001, oh, it's it's the terrorists, and and now that people are tired of that game. You know, now that they're tired of all those games, what they're focused on right now is, oh, we need to give government emergency powers to help this disease. And and there's always going to be something government's going to use to frighten you so that you'll give up your individual liberty and expand their power. Mm -hmm. And usually that involves giving them money. Yeah, yeah. I think so, like, in, in what you just said, right, like, you, you just asked a question, like, does it happen under prosperity when everyone's happy and making all the money and stuff like that? I agree with you. It doesn't happen. But that's how you always know when it's about to happen. <laughs> because what, what ha here's what happens to people, right? If you have all this awesomeness and then there's an emergency situation that pops up and you're yeah. like, oh, wait a second. Are you saying I'm going to lose all my awesomeness? Okay, go ahead. Take all the powers you need to, to make sure you preserve my awesomeness and I get to keep living, you know, with all these great, awesome, wonderful things that we're all into. Like, I'm not even trying to tell anyone that I'm not materialistic. I think, you know, everyone is. I have things that I like, you know, we could sit here and, and enumerate. But I think that's that's always the setup that you know that, oh, this is about to happen because everyone's doing really well. And they're used to that doing really wellness. And then something comes up and they're like, oh, crap. There's no way that we, you know, we want to let this happen. And they give everything away to people. And those people never, ever want to give that back. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, it, it's amazing to me when, when we look at our forefathers, the people that built this country. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like they didn't know diseases. 
<laughs> I mean, you're talking yeah. about, you know, I mean, you're, you're talking about these people. I mean, even if they didn't come directly from Europe, their parents or their grandparents <laughs> could tell you that the bubonic plague wiped out 33 percent of the population there. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. you know, or, or, or you know, the, when you're talking about other diseases that, uh, you know, wiped out entire swaths of populations. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing to me that people say, well, they couldn't foresee uh, international travel. Really? I mean, how they do you think all it. those people traveled around the world? I mean, do you think they just wish <laughs> themselves away? Yeah. So it's this amazing thing. It, it's it's what it is, is disrespect of, of people in times past that had greater courage than we do. Mm-hmm. And, and I think there's a huge movement. And that's what that's what a lot of leftists do is they mm-hmm. denigrate the people that founded this country and said, oh, they were un, uneducated. And you know, I mean, people don't realize Thomas Jefferson could write in seven different languages. He could write in two languages simultaneously. He could write in one language with one wow. with his right hand. He could work in. He could write in another language with his left hand. He could do that simultaneously. Mm-hmm. He could write in Greek and Latin. He spoke seven languages fluently. I mean, this, these are not dummies. You know, that started this country. I mean, they were mm-hmm. very well read. Um, I'm not exalting them above anybody, but what I will say is this: is that they had the courage to dare to bring about a different form of government. When people realize how radical, and, and I mean radical in a good way, radical is not a bad word. Radical is a very cool word in my vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Um, when, you, when you look at how radical the Declaration of Independence was, rights don't come from government, right? Rights come from the creator of heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. Like that's what our founders believed, and, and they believed it so much that they put it in our founding document of government. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what separates Western civilization from the rest of the world, Hank, and, and you may have – you have a unique perspective to speak to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what separates Western civilization, of which we're a part of, from the rest of the world is this acknowledgement that our rights do, in fact, come from the creator of heaven and earth. They're not given out by government. Mm-hmm. And the, the whole purpose of government is to protect those rights. So when they start violating them, when they, when they start violating them and continue to be the main uh, antagonist that violates this, I've got a big problem with that. Mm-hmm. And, and the, circum- the circumstances will always exist for government to violate your liberty. Like they, and if they don't exist currently, they'll, they will create a situation to where that's the – and I'm not a conspiracy person. I'm not this person that thinks there's this vast like worldwide conspiracy to violate rights. I'm just saying I think people in politics are very opportunistic. Mm-hmm. I think I think they're very opportunistic because people usually will create what they what they seek is money, power, influence, uh, and comfort for themselves. And I mean, you look at people in Washington D.C. How many of them do you think would pass a regular drug test? Uh, about I mean, very few. let alone a psychiatric test. Yeah. you know, these are yeah. true sociopaths. I mean, these are people that that don't care about me or you or the foundation of this country. I mean, these are people that if they would take my high school history class would fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I I totally agree. Listen, going back to what you just said about like our forefathers, I really believe that, that I think my parents were stronger and their, and and my grandparents and, and going back as we go back, they had to be right. They had to be. They had to be stronger people. They had to be more creative. They had to fight harder, work harder, right, all the time. And one of the things that's happening to us with technology, me included, what's happening is that because we have all this tech, it's all of a sudden like we have all this kind of time that we never had before. You know, and we and well, we fill it with a lot of things, and almost in a way, it's making us like. Uh, it's it's creating that situation. I don't think I agree with you that it's the politicians want to do it, but there's lots of things that are doing it to us. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, when we talk about generations of people, we got to be careful because, you know, there's really good people in every generation. Mm-hmm. I mean, in my in my parents' generation, uh, of course, they're baby boomers and they mm-hmm. grew up during the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Mm-hmm. You know, coming of age. Mm-hmm. Um, those people, uh, there were very hardworking, good people in that generation. Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean, there's also the leftist, you know, uh, literally commie children, you know, mm-hmm. of people that, that were in academia. I mean, those those people were absolutely useless and worthless. They they wanted an America that our founders never wanted. They wanted an America where, where government was big and, you know, everybody could do whatever they wanted. And then before them, of course, you know, people call uh, the World War II generation the greatest generation. I, I disagree with that 100 percent. You know, the greatest generation is what gave us massive deficit spending. You know, the greatest generation is what gave us the New Deal. Uh, the, the greatest generation is what gave us 16 years of unfettered Franklin Roosevelt 
totalitarian government for 16 <laughs> years yeah. in which unemployment remained at 25 mm percent -hmm. so you know i mean you're talking about grasps of government power like you can't even imagine and then their parents of course had woodrow wilson that brought us the federal reserve act that brought us the income tax that brought us prohibition that got us involved in world war one I. I mean massive massive international involvement against what our founders wanted so i don't think that that's the greatest generation at all i, I think our greatest generation uh, is the revolutionary generation, but I'm going to say something that may shock a lot of people. I think our greatest generation is yet to come. Okay. I think our Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.